Welcome to a four-step case study for justifying organizational ITIL adoption, a webinar presented by Sunview Software and co-presented by one of our current customers of our Change Gear product, Management Science Associates, or MSA. My name is Justin Rue. I'm a product marketing manager here at Sunview Software, and I'll be leading the presentation today. Uh, I also have a co-presenter from MSA, Brian Peck, and he will be going over those four steps uh, for his particular case study on this, uh, this subject. So. So on the agenda today, just a couple of items that we really wanted to focus on. Uh, preparation for ITIL adoption, we're going to spend a little time on that. We're going to spend uh, the bulk of the time on this webinar speaking about four steps for success. And this is an actual customer case study presented by Brian over at MSA. And we'll summarize and kind of wrap up and also provide you some additional uh, resources around IT man uh, service management, service desk, those types of things. So to kick everything off, we wanted to talk about not getting ahead of ourselves. So when we talk about an ITIL project, Gartner says that you should justify an ITIL-based initiative in terms of ROI before moving forward with that project. And really why we wanted to point this out is that a lot of organizations will see benefit in moving to some sort of best practices or maybe building out your organization's processes around you know, those ITIL best practices. So although we see value in it, though, at the end of the day, we need support from uh, really everyone in the organization, but specifically uh, the people who are going to be touched by it most and executives. How do we do that? Well, to get executives buy-in, uh, we're going to start with ROI. And at the end of the day, the almighty dollar really drives uh, you know, whether we get projects greenlit. And Brian uh, from MSA is going to be talking a lot about his specific case study and how he was able to get that accomplished in his organization. He's even going to talk about ROI and just to, you know, kind of show where he stands right now after implementing. So I wanted to you know, touch on the challenges that uh, most organizations see. Uh, here at Sunview, we spoke to a large subset of our customers uh, who we know adopted ITIL and that we, they did that with our Change Your product and we uh, helped them to leverage ITIL through our product. Uh, some of the challenges that were pointed out to us, organizations uh, you know, a lot of times are afraid of change, just in general. Uh, the idea of change may uh, you know, drive fear into the hearts of not only uh, you know, everyday users, but specifically executives. Um, but, but some of the everyday users just may not even think anything is broken, may not feel that there's a need to make a move or make a change. Uh, and so if that's the case, uh, it may be difficult to get support there. Um, in some cases as well, the project may just be too big of an undertaking, uh, or at least it may feel that way, to an organization. So if it feels like it's a big undertaking, we're gonna, it might be a drain on resources and time. Uh, sometimes it may not be worth it. And again, at the end of the day, we always come back to cost. And sometimes the feeling may be that the costs outweigh the benefits of uh, you know, doing an overhaul of processes or maybe putting in a new tool to manage those processes. So really what we're trying to get at here is you need to build a case of, uh, for justification based on cold hard facts. And uh, you know, again, I'm going to hand it over to Brian here in just a moment. He's going to be talking about uh, you know, those facts, how to gather the data, how to get support, and how to prove ROI. So uh, as I hand it over to Brian here, I'm going to be uh, giving you control, Brian. Uh, he's going to go over more of his uh, background. And with that, um, he's going to be talking a lot more about uh, how he was able to be successful with this project. Uh, Brian, you should be getting control here right now. Thank you, Justin. And as he said, my name is Brian Peck. I've been in IT leadership for approximately 25 years. I've been involved with ITIL since 2006 as a global process owner for EDS. And currently rolling out ITIL, ITSM for uh, MSA. Uh, you see I've worked for a number of major companies. Uh, three of those, interestingly enough, uh, I never changed desks for uh, due to outsourcing. So while it looks like I moved around, many of those were just through the outsourcing uh, changing of hands. Uh, moving on to the slides. Uh, the first thing of developing your ITIL program is doing your research. Um, we had some existing processes in place. They had a lot of gaps, a lot of holes, so we needed to understand what our current environment and processes look like and where we needed them to be to advance where we were going. Uh, taking that information and the gaps that we defined, we created a requirements matrix. It was based on features, function, flexibility, and price. Uh, taking all those into account with our wants and needs and what we had to have and what was nice to have, um, we applied six tools that we uh, researched. And going through that process, uh, we narrowed ourselves down to Sunview for exactly what I said. It had the best features, functions, flexibility, and the price that we wanted to pay for what we needed to do. 
Um, we used our metrics of what we could obtain and what we had to speculate or forecast through on how would we apply the tools and the process to improve where we were at and how could we value that to get supporters on board and get them bought into what we were doing. Uh, that brought us to convincing the executives. So with that, we had to educate them before we even thought about asking funding. And to do that, you have to understand the audience, and you have to go out and get supporters for you. So my first attempts were I went to the help desk guys first and the desktop people and the technicians to sell them on process and what process meant to them. So I had to have a presentation that made it sound right and good to them and show them how it would bring value to them. And as you get those early adopters on board, you go to your executive team and you build a presentation for them. In many cases, they have much less knowledge of it, so you have to tailor it back, make it very high level, make it more business decision, less technology, and how it will benefit the company in the long run and how it could benefit our clients so they can see that transferring across. Um, so in doing this, you'll probably have to make a number of presentations for those different audiences and for the different phases of adoption. So being patient and understanding are going to be your keys and being able to repeat and repeat and repeat. Um, you know, it's going to be the second, third, fourth time through when somebody finally gets the light bulb and sees how it's going to apply to you. Um, so after you get people ex educated, you move on to your funding. So with the process assessment and user satisfaction surveys that we had, we identified user pain points and how could we use the service catalog and workflow automations to provide improvements and show them how we could speed, streamline, speed things up, make it cheaper, better, faster. Um, a lot of these were high expense items. They were they cost us a lot through incident resolution, or it might have been an unplanned change, things that just cost us money. And being able to identify those and build those into the improvement plan was part of how do you get your funding. you got to make sure you're going to pay back the company for what you've done. Um, to do that, I had to create five different presentations that outlined my approach to the ITIL program, the benefits of it, and again, it was geared towards the different audiences and educational levels. Uh, I built a project plan to show my first eight months, and in my first eight months, my target was to roll out service catalog incident and change. Uh, the rest of my roadmap that I built was for the remaining items, uh, problem CMDB and such. Uh, the biggest key is to understand the communication and training plan. It is huge, um, and it has to be tailored again to the audience. The end users have a much different communication plan and a training plan because they're going to be coming in through a service catalog, have much less visibility. They need to know how it works for them, where it benefits them, how do they approve, how does it streamline. The technicians need to understand what is an incident, what is the severity level, when does it promote, when does it demote, what phases does it go through? And then you use that information to build out uh, your business case, your cost, your benefits. And including in your cost, you have to build out your cost for training. And you know, in most cases, you can do a video and train a couple hundred people in half hour each or whatever. But it's an expense to you. And you have to capture that in your investment in your work uh, ROI worksheets. Uh, moving on to the ROI projections that I used. Um, looking at our service desk, they were receiving about 320 calls a week, 16,000 plus calls a year. What I'm going to assume, or have, had assumed, was 30% of those requests would be automated through the service catalog. Um, so that's 1,248 agent hours a year that we are saving with the calls they're not taking. So that's 4,992 tickets that no longer pass through the service desk, and we're using a 15-minute per agent handling, that's plus or minus, but it's a good average to use. Uh, I went and I looked at technician time on what could be saved through use of service catalog, automating tracking of tickets, automating approval, automating the routings, all those good things. 
And while I think there might be more than 15 minutes, I didn't. I wanted to be conservative in my numbers, so I used 15 minutes for the user and for the technician, improving what they would see from what they experienced before in our more manual antiquated processes. Um, so uh, applying that, it was a $31,000 savings for service desk, $149,000, roughly $150,000 for the user and technician time. Uh, phase two of that is improving the incident and problem resolution times due to the new controls. Using one of the real life examples that came up while I was doing my research, um, we had a unplanned change that went into effect and somebody made a change. Middle of the night, we noticed there was a, a client being impacted. They started calling out the on-calls who knew nothing changed. So they started doing a lot of investigation, um, called out a number of more people. We had 30 hours of man time invested into it. Next morning, we got to it. Somebody sent, try it now. And everything worked. And it turned out they forgot to open up a firewall after they made some edits. And so it was something we could have solved in five minutes if we knew that change exist, existed. I'm sorry. And uh, so taking that, you don't want to you know, count a full 10 hours for that. So what I did was I took 25% of our total service desk tickets, and that's like 4,160. And if I can assume I can improve somewhere along an hour for each of those tickets, that's another $249,000 that I could save adding to my total ROI projection. So using those numbers, I uh, revisited my implementation six months after we went live, and I applied those to these actual numbers that we came up to. Um, so on this slide, after my first year startup cost or my estimates versus my six month savings, the cost to implement that I had come up with was going to be $343,721. Um, that included the Sunview change gear licenses, that included my servers, that included labor, which I did through a very small dedicated team. I used some interns. I did it basically on the cheap. Um, but looking at my savings over the first six months were just shy, $330,000. Um, but we did notice some things that I didn't calculate for. Um, the request actually increased to our service desk. And while I was able to defer many of those requests to automated routings, automated user interface types through the service catalog, we actually increased um, the number of tickets coming in. And then uh, the task features, we decreased the number, the amount of time people were spending on them. So we had 2,800 plus requests that would have normally required help desk time, uh, technician time that routed straight through. And it was a, a major savings on our part because we would normally send forms back and forth and all that was automated through the service catalog features. Um, the research time, the auditing time, we had a, an audit last year and for our SSA 16 and what normally spent a lot of time researching emails, trying to find history of tickets and such, is all built into the ticket. So it captures the history throughout. I don't have to dig for those. It's all built into the tool, into the, the ticket itself. So the auditors, it was so smooth just to go through. And they gave me the list of items they wanted to, to pick. And we opened each one up. They asked for where this is. You go to the history tab. You found it there. It was a very nice, smooth transition. So after our first six months, we were $12,000 shy of the investment. And my total projected savings for one year is 318000 So um, my current investment in, it, it's going to pay for itself in the first six months, and I'm going to be paying back by the end of this year. Um, that has gathered a lot of interest in the company, and we're finding some other divisions that had their own help desks starting to contact me now to ask if they could be brought into our tool and absorbed by that. So it's uh, it's only going to grow for us as we see it. So um, 
it, it's been a very positive impact to our company. Uh, and at this point, I will turn it over to Justin to finish us out. Thank you, Brian. It looks like I've got control now. Um, so we'd like to summarize what we talked about today. I really appreciate Brian's time and his insight into this subject. Um, and, and the key thing that uh, he and I agree should be taken away from this is uh, we want to touch on what's it going to take to recover our investment. That's something you need to be thinking about throughout this whole process. We started with identifying some key challenges that uh, we took away from customers of uh, Sunview's Change Gear product. Um, you know, and once we identify those challenges, let's identify solutions to those. So we're going to start by doing our research. Uh, the first step of this four-step success plan for ITIL adoption is identifying gaps in processes, tools, maybe staffing, any areas that you feel um, you're really going to need to address. Once we gather that data, we prepare some presentations. And again, there may be multiple presentations to executives. We want to get the right people in the room. We want to make sure we understand what their objectives are, their wants, and their needs. And we want to map our data and our solutions to those uh, you know, objectives and maybe even some of those business problems that they're trying to solve. Make sure we convince everyone in the room. Once we've gone through a couple of presentations, we've convinced everyone, we've got our hands on some funding to actually do some good within the organization. Let's take that funding. Let's map out our project plan. We want to do that, and we want to be detailed. We want to do that over a long-term period of time. And then finally, we want to project some ROI based on some solid estimates and assumptions. We want to be conservative to make sure that we're not uh, you know, putting ourselves in a tight spot when we actually go to implement. And then the final piece uh, that he added with some ROI numbers for himself, usually around that six-month mark is a great time to see where you're at uh, after you've implemented to make sure you're mapping uh, out and you're actually tracking to uh, meet your objectives that you initially projected. Um, so as we wrap up today, we always like to talk about you know, Sunview's offerings. Uh, please check out sunviewsoftware.com slash learn. You can learn a lot about not just our product and, and some of our customer successes, although that information is there, but there's a lot of information on overall you know, change management, service desk, ITSM, and ITIL uh, types of guides and implementation tools that you can use to educate yourself and to prepare yourself for this type of a pitch that you may need to make. Uh, so please feel free to, to do that. Uh, also, sales at sunviewsoftware.com is an email address that you can leverage to uh, get in contact with one of our sales reps and have a conversation around you know, just uh, what we can do to help you with our change gear product. So again, I'd like to thank you very much today. I'd like to thank Brian from over at MSA for his time. I really hope you got a lot of value out of this. We look forward to more webinars in the future. Uh, and uh, you know, good luck with your projects. Thanks so much.